Hello, everybody, and welcome to our Wellness Wednesday Live for the month of April. I'm Dr. Marie Holowaychuk, and I will be talking to you today about how movement boosts well being. So by way of brief introduction, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a small animal emergency and critical care specialist with a passionate um, drive to boost uh, health and well-being amongst veterinary professionals. Um, in my clinical work, I do uh, function as a locum as well as a teleconsultant. And then for my well-being advocacy, I write blogs and newsletters and do research as well. Um, I run online intensive programs for individuals. You can find more about those um, on my website. And I also do consulting and tailored programs and webinars for hospitals. Um, in non-COVID times, I do travel to deliver keynotes and do workshops in person. Uh, those have now, now uh, changed to being online. And I have a podcast called Reviving Vet Med. So for those of you who have difficulty getting into these lives on a monthly basis, you're welcome to download the podcast to wherever you listen to your podcast or subscribe to the podcast. And you'll get the episodes um, that are the audio version of this video every month. And when I'm not doing all of the work things, veterinary related and otherwise, I do like to hike, especially as the weather gets warmer. Um, in the meantime, I do a lot of strength training and I am a mom to an almost two-year-old toddler who keeps me very, very busy. Okay, so by way of logistics, for those of you who are watching live, um, those of you who are tuning in through Zoom, please feel welcome to comment or ask questions in the chat at any time during this session. Those of you who are watching via Facebook, um, you're welcome to leave comments, which I will come to and address after this session is completed. And... The reason that we dove into this topic for this month is because April, believe it or not, is Move More Month. Now, there's a lot of different themes for the month of April, but this is the one I chose in particular as, as a little passion project of mine. And the session objectives for today that we will be getting into will be reviewing the research regarding the downsides of a sedentary lifestyle that many of us have, um, recapping the benefits of exercise, importantly sharing strategies for incorporating regular exercise into our day and all other ways of increasing movement into our day, even if it's not exercise, not all of us love exercise. So we want to make sure that we're still incorporating movement into our day, even if it's not that structured exercise. So many of you were probably captivated by one of the things that I shared when I was promoting this session, which is this idea that sitting is the new smoking. And there is a lot of research actually to support this notion. So what the research says based on a really large study that was completed more than a decade ago is that people who sit the most compared to people who sit the least have a greater risk of disease and death. Now that comes in the form of 100 112% increased risk of diabetes, 147% increased risk of cardiovascular events, so that could be stroke or heart attack, 90% increased risk of death from those cardiovascular events, and a 49% increased risk of death from any cause. So, you know, they looked at more than 800,000 people and documented their movement and, and the amount of time that they were sedentary, and this is what they came up with. So really sound research to demonstrate that those who sit the most in their day are at risk of these health concerns. Now, shockingly, a quarter of adults sit for more than eight hours per day, and 44% of adults get little to no exercise. In fact, the average adult watches three hours of TV per day, and the average adult is only active for less than 20 minutes per day. So this is very, very concerning. We have adopted a very sedentary lifestyle. Um, I will be honest for me as well, especially on my days when I'm not in the clinic, I am very sedentary too. I'm sitting at my computer in my office. I'm, you know, maybe getting up to, to, 
go to the bathroom or get some tea or let the dog out or whatever it might be, but there is a lot of sitting. It's not as active as it would be in the clinic. And even when I am in the clinic, because so much of my time is dedicated to talking to owners on the phone or typing in medical records, there is still a lot of sitting. And so that is really what prompted me to want to do this session for you today. And so, you know, again, a lot of our lives are uh, dictated by technology and a lot of that technology is sedentary. And so we are sitting when we are typing in our medical records or doing other clerical tasks um, in the workplace. So what's wrong with sitting, you might wonder, you know, when we think about, you know, putting our feet up and relaxing, we think that this is a good thing. You know, you're probably saying to yourself, gosh, I'm confused because I feel like I'm supposed to be relaxing more, but now you're telling me that I shouldn't be sitting so much. Well, the reality is, is that when we sit down or when we are sedentary, blood flow slows down and then fatty acids can build up in circulation. And that fatty acid buildup is what can predispose to blood clots and, and stroke and so on. There's also a lot of research to, to confirm that inactivity leads to insulin resistance, which can then predispose to diabetes and obesity. Inactivity also slows fat metabolism. So when we're inactive, when we're sitting, lipoprotein lipase activity drops by 90%. So we're not going to metabolize fat when we're just sitting around either. And essentially, when we're just sitting, when we're sedentary, this takes away from activities that promote well-being. So, you know, there's no doubt when we're at work, we have to do the work. But when we go home and we, you know, lay out on the couch and we spend what the average adult would spend three hours sitting and watching TV, you know, there are times within that three hour period where we could be taking the dog for a walk, going outside, doing some chores around the house, or perhaps doing an exercise class. So that sedentary time is taking away from more active time that would be more conducive to promoting well-being. So what's the good news in all of this um, before you, you know, run out and, and uh, you know, buy that really expensive treadmill desk, which is amazing. And I would love to have one. Um, you should know that 60 to 75 minutes of moderate, acti moderate activity every day can actually counter the effects of too much sitting. So even if you have a job that requires you to sit at the computer or to remain sedentary for a certain period of time, if you can make sure that you have an hour to an hour and a half of moderate activity, so something that gets you a little bit breathless, gets your heart rate up, that benefit, those benefits cardiovascularly will help to offset any um, detrimental effects of sitting. So you might be saying to yourself, but Marie, I don't exercise. I don't like exercise. I've never been able to get myself to exercise. Um, you might consider yourself more of a couch potato cat, as, as some people say. And the good news is, is that there are strategies for getting more exercise. And I'm going to share those with you today. So the first strategy is to get clear on why you are exercising. Now, maybe these statistics have woken you up a little bit to the realization that, gosh, you know, I really need to, to get more activity into my life, especially if you are an individual who is predisposed to heart disease, either because of genetics or other health conditions that you have. There are so many reasons why exercise is beneficial, and we want to get this why very, very clear in our minds. Do you want to improve your endurance? Maybe you're, you know, getting breathless going up the stairs and you're thinking, this is crazy. You know, I, I can't, can't even get up the stairs without, you know, being out of breath. So maybe you want to improve on that. There's research to demonstrate that exercise improves sleep. So maybe you want to do it for the sleep enhancing properties. Exercise boosts energy. So do you want to feel more energized? We know that exercise builds muscle. Do you want to get stronger? Do you want to be more flexible? Do you want to prevent injury? Because definitely there are forms of exercise that help us to prevent those injuries from falling or other things that might happen. And then certainly, um, especially as women, especially get older and have uh, different hormonal changes, we tend to be more predisposed to osteopenia and, and osteoporosis low bone density and exercise because the tension on the muscles stimulates bone matrix production, it actually increases bone density. So there are so many important reasons to exercise. Pick one and really remind yourself of it. Every time you think about exercising, you think this is why I'm exercising. 
and keep those benefits top of mind. I remind myself all the time, you know, yes, I love being strong. I love being in shape. Um, you know, it's a great opportunity to regulate weight and everything else. But the biggest reason for me that I exercise and the biggest benefits that I see are the mental health benefits. So the second strategy, keeping benefits top of mind, you're going to live longer. It's better for weight regulation, increased energy, reduced fatigue, better memory, believe it or not, decreased cognitive impairment. So people who are more active see lower incidence of dementia as they age. Um, you can relax more if you've been able to exercise. It reduces stress, anxiety, depression, strengthens muscles, makes your bones more dense and improves sleep. So again, remind yourself, even if these are Aren't your particular why for exercising, remind yourself of all the great benefits that you're getting when you do so. And then benefit number three, or the third strategy you can use to get more exercise is to choose exercise that you enjoy, because the best exercise is the one that you do. People ask me all the time, you know, like, what's what, what do you recommend for exercise? It's whatever you enjoy because you are going to be more likely to do it. So maybe that's Pilates or yoga. Maybe it's high intensity interval training, swimming, walking, running, hiking, strength training, spin, bar, boxing, rowing, dancing, paddle sports like tennis or pickleball, team sports like basketball or baseball, golf, especially if you're walking, you're not using the golf cart, soccer, football. I mean, honestly, you name it, there is a sport out there for anyone or a form of exercise for anyone anyone. So try them out. And, and if there's something that you really enjoyed as a child, look into, you know, is there some form of this activity for me as an adult? Um, you know, I played team sports for the longest time and I'm, I'm getting to the age now where, um, you know, I used to play such competitive basketball that when I play basketball for my age group, I just don't enjoy it because it's not, you know, it's not as fast paced, you know, as, as I used to play, but I can engage in team sports in other ways, doing other team activities or even going to group exercise classes really helps me to kind of feel like I'm part of a team. So the fourth strategy for getting more exercise is to considering non-traditional exercises. So things like gardening, yard work, house chores, you can work up a sweat doing those activities. We got a whole dump of snow in Calgary yesterday. So I shoveled the driveway this morning and it was so funny because somebody walked by um, who was walking their dog and he said, you know, you don't need to go to the gym today. And I said, yeah, I was, I was thinking the exact same thing. I mean, we burn a lot of calories doing those extra forms of exercise. And if you can do them out side and enjoy nature, you're strengthening your muscles, you're getting those same anti-anxiety benefits and antidepressive benefits, uh, all the benefits for your sleep, even though you're not necessarily going to the gym for a class. So don't necessarily put pressure on yourself that you have to be, you know, finding a sport or an exercise class that fits with you. If you are very active around your house, or maybe you do, you know, your neighbor's lawn as well as yours, that is an excellent form of exercise too. And then strategy number five, remember some exercise is better than no exercise. I talk to people who are just have this idea in their head that they need to have some sort of like epic, you know, workout session every day. Um, maybe your schedule doesn't permit that. You know, people ask me too, when I'm working a 12 to 14 hour shift, like how do I, how do I still fit the self-care in? Well, you fit it in, but it is much shorter. So for me, when I have a 10 or 12 hour shift, I only do 10 or 15 minutes of exercise, either first thing in the morning or after my daughter goes to bed. You know, some exercise every day is better than nothing. I love this quote by Gretchen Rubin, where she says, what you do every day matters more than what you do every once in a while. If you just sort of bank your exercise to doing a class on the weekend when you're not working or on your days off, you know, when you're off shift, it's not going to serve you as well as if you were incorporating that movement into every day. So again, if you have not exercised for months or years, do not put pressure on yourself to be starting out with these like 45 to 60 minute workout sessions. Start with five minutes a day. Um, in fact, you know, there are habit forming experts out there who say, you know, just start by driving to the gym. You don't even have to go in, but just make it a habit of going to the gym every day. Again, um, just some little bit is better than nothing. And that's because it builds habits. 
Um, strategy number six, shorter exercise is actually often better. So along those same lines, there is really good research to demonstrate that 10 minutes of high intensity interval training, what we often refer to as HIT, is as effective in terms of the cardiovascular and weight regulating benefits compared to 60 minutes of sustained low intensity exercise. So when I put this into practical terms, what this basically means is that if you get on your treadmill and you do 10 minutes where you do 10 seconds of very fast paced walking supplemented, you know, then 50 seconds of, you know, just casual walking and you do those 10 intervals for 10 minutes, you are actually getting the same benefits as if you were to do a slow paced jog for 60 minutes. So I don't know about you, but knowing when I know that I can work out in a very short period of time and get the same benefit as a long period of time, for me, that's a game changer. And so there are very often days where I will just do high intensity exercise, like I said, for 10 or 15 minutes, or rather than a 45 or 60 minute you know, spin class, I do a 30 minute class that has you know intervals and it's just faster paced but I'm getting the same benefit as I would over kind of like a meandering exercise class over a longer period of time. So keep that in mind and, and don't feel guilty when you can't exercise for a long period of time. Know that you're getting really good benefits in that short period of time if you, if you are able to do that higher intensity training. And then the last strategy for getting more exercise is to find some way to establish accountability. Maybe this is scheduling it in. Maybe this is finding a workout buddy or a workout group, joining a team, signing up for a class that happens once a week, registering for a race. Very often when people know, gosh, I've got this triathlon coming up or this um, you know, half marathon or this 10K, whatever it might be, that gets them into, you know, making a, a schedule um, to train and to be ready for that. And what really helps is to add the workouts into your calendar. Very often for us, when it's not on the calendar, it doesn't exist, it doesn't happen. So it feels kind of silly to put, you know, 30 minutes of exercise onto your schedule, but it's so much more likely to happen when it is actually scheduled in. So take advantage of those accountability strategies. And I love this quote, you're only one workout away from a good mood. And, you know, I hear this often, it, the, the hardest thing about working out is, is getting to the workout, you know, getting it started, getting your workout clothes on, getting the shoes, getting the equipment, getting to the gym, whatever it might be. But once you're there, yeah, it might be hard, but you feel amazing after. And so I just remind myself, I have never done a workout where I didn't feel better after the workout was done. And so um, I really strongly urge you to, to start with that mindset. And know that there are many ways to increase the amount of movement that you have in your day. It doesn't necessarily need to be exercise, okay? So during your workday, things that you can do, well, first of all, if work is not, you know, down a highway and, and a very long ways away, you could bike to work, especially as the weather gets nicer. Could you walk to work? Maybe you could run to work. There's a lot of people who are doing this run commute where they, you know, keep a change of clothes at work. They keep their, you know, lunch supplies and whatever they need at work. So they have very little in their pack and they put their little pack on and they run to work. They get ready for work at work and off they go with their day and then they run home at the end of the day. Um, and if you can't run, bike, walk to work, well, when you drive to work, could you park a bit farther away so that you've got a little bit of a walk um, into the building? If you have the option to use a standing desk, this is a fantastic way to not be sitting so much, even though standing, um, you know, you kind of feel like you're just standing in one spot, like you're not really moving, but you're shifting your weight, you're moving, you're using your core and your stabilizing muscles. Now, what individuals say is that it's not good to be standing all day either. So while sitting all day is very hard on our bodies and our cardiovascular health, standing all day can also be hard on our body. So the best thing that you can do is to actually alternate between sitting in a chair, maybe sitting on a stool, sitting on a stability ball, standing up, just change it around. The point is to change it up and to not be stuck in one body position all day long. Um, I love the idea of walking meetings. This is something that I've really tried to do when I know that I want to connect with somebody. We want to have a chat about something, but I don't have to take notes. We don't have to be at our computer screen sharing or anything like that. 
You could also go for a walk during your lunch break. And I know some of you are like, Marie, have you been in veterinary practice lately? There is no lunch break. <laughs> I understand. But if you even have five or 10 minutes to get outside and do a lap around the building or, you know, walk to your car, have lunch in your car and then walk back to your car, just something to get, get yourself moving and bonus points for getting out in the fresh air. And then just making sure that you insert stretch or move breaks into your day. So I make a point of, you know, I really try every half an hour to an hour, depending on how in the zone I am or whether I'm on a webinar, but to just get up and move and stretch. Maybe I refill my tea. Maybe I, you know, um, go into the kitchen or grab something or even just get up and, and run upstairs and then run back downstairs. Just something to incorporate that into your day. Other things that you can do either at work or at home, if you're talking on the phone or you're checking your phone, can you stand up? Can you pace? Can you do this while you're on a walk? So I really try not to just plunk down on the couch and sit on the phone. If I'm going to be doing something on the phone, having a phone call, whatever it might be, I do try and stay active. And again, bonus points, if you can get in your headphones and get outside for a walk and talk to somebody while you're on the phone. Um, when your activity monitor beeps and goes off and says, you know, time to move, listen, get up, move, pump your arms, move around, do something that is going to you know, get the blood flowing so that you can, you know, reset that, that alert. Those alerts are set there for a reason because research again is, has demonstrated that movement is so important. I think using stairs whenever possible is, is really important. I'm sure most of you don't have an elevator or an escalator in your home. Certainly out in public, you want to use stairs whenever possible. But even in your home, for me, for example, I have a powder room on the main floor and then a bathroom upstairs for my ensuite. And I make a point of like going upstairs to use the bathroom just because it's going to insert a little bit more movement into my day. When I used to travel all the time, I would always take the stairs in the airports rather than the escalators. And I'm sure people looked at me like I was crazy. Like, what is this person doing? But I've just been sitting on an airplane for two or three hours. I don't want to now stand on an escalator. I want to move my legs and get going. So stairs whenever possible. And then if you can pair active movements with other activities, this is great. And this is a great strategy for and getting movement just inherently into your day. My physiotherapist, um, you know, she, she's also a busy mom and, you know, has her own business and, um, she would say to me, you know, you, you, it doesn't have to be like epic exercise and movement into your day. She was like, I just hold a plank while the coffee is brewing, or I do squats while I'm brushing my teeth, or I stand on one leg while I'm brushing my teeth. You know, there's different ways that you can challenge your body and, and incorporate movement especially if you're just waiting around for, you know, the microwave to finish going or the, the kettle to finish bubbling or whatever it might be. Um, and then I'm a big advocate for walking or biking whenever possible, not just because it's better for the environment than taking our car, because it's better for you. So I have a personal rule where if I can walk or bike somewhere in 20 to 30 minutes, then that is my option of choice. That is my transportation of choice. Now, of course, if you're going to load up on groceries, which I have done before and then thought not thought it through and had to carry home, you know, all these bags of groceries. So you want to be mindful, obviously, about the errand that you're running. But the point is, is that, you know, especially if we're going and running several errands, if one store isn't that far away and you can just walk to that store instead of moving the car, again, these are just easy ways to incorporate more movement into your day. So I would love to know um, in the comment section or in the chat, how do you increase movement into your day? I know I've heard lots of different really interesting strategies that people are using, and I'm always up for more suggestions and, and other things to share with individuals. So I would love to read those um, if you're willing to share. Otherwise, our key takeaways for today's session are that sitting for long periods of time is really detrimental to our longevity and to our cardiovascular health. So we can incorporate regular exercise into our day to offset these detrimental effects of sitting and just incorporating uh, different forms of movement into our day is going to be helpful in the long term as well. There's also research to show that shorter high intensity exercise has equal benefits to longer low intensity exercise. So keep that in mind if you are, you know, heavily scheduled or you just don't have time to get to the gym and do a long class. 
and that there are many ways to enhance movement and to reduce sitting throughout the day. So again, taking the stairs, um, you know, doing squats while you're checking your email on your phone or checking in social media, you know, there's lots of different ways that we can incorporate that movement. Um, I'll be interested to hear what other strategies that you have to share as well. So once again, if you are wanting to subscribe to my podcast or download the podcast rather than tuning in every month for these video sessions, please do go to my website, mariehollowichuk.com forward slash podcast. You'll find the episodes and ability to subscribe there. You can also just go to Spotify, um, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts and you'll find my episodes of Reviving Vet Med on your podcast provider. Now, believe it or not, April is also financial literacy month. So um, I actually partnered with Florida Veterinary Advisors this month to create a seven-day financial wellness challenge. Um, this is a free seven-day challenge for anybody who's interested. There's videos every day, exercises, all with strategies aimed to improve your financial well-being. So we know that those in the veterinary industry who have any form of student debt have lower levels of well-being and that only 30% of people have a long-term financial plan. So I want to try to mitigate the stress around finances and debt and having an emergency fund and so on by offering this information for you. So if you go to my website, mariehollowaycheck.com forward slash financial wellness, you will get redirected to a sign-up page where you will be able to opt in for this seven-day challenge. And please share that with others who you think might be interested. Otherwise, that is all for today's episode. I will be happy to take questions in the chat. You are also always welcome to reach out to me directly by email, info at mariehollowaycheck.com. Please visit my website for my blogs, other podcast episodes, and other information and well-being resources for your veterinary team. You can also follow me on social media. And I will be back again next month for our other next, I should say, next episode of our wellness Wednesday live. So in the meantime, I hope you can get lots of movement in for the rest of April's move more month. And I wish you a wonderful day. Thanks so much, everybody.